Yo, what is up guys, it's Nacho here, we're back with another Football Impact video, and in the headlines this week, Albert, relegation, 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 and a fucking unbelievable, incredible title race in Syria. We'll kick it off, and we always do, with the Premier League. And in the Premier League, Arsenal played Manchester United in sort of Wenger's last ever game at Old Trafford, and the almighty Manchester United. Which they handily turned out to be the, but what it turned out to be a testimonial game for Arsenal Wenger. It was the weirdest match I've ever seen. Because Arsenal, much step fans applauded Arsenal Wenger, which I, I, I understand because he's done an amazing job at Arsenal for 22 years, etc. etc. Also, it was a really nice touch from Sir Alex and Jose Mourinho to give, to give Arsenal Wenger a nice sort of, um, I don't know, sediment trophy or something like that. It was a really nice touch and I liked it a lot. I even tweeted saying, really nice touch for Manchester United to do for Arsenal because I think he's been the greatest manager for Arsenal ever had. Third thing, um, the match. My Arsenal played a very weak team which wasn't the strongest because I know they played in Europa League second leg against Atletico Madrid, which they're 1-1 from the first leg, I understand that, but Manchester United, come on, seriously Mourinho, you have got so much talent at your disposal at that squad, you've got one of the best midfield players, who could be one of the best midfield players, in Paul Popa, you've got Alexis Sanchez, you've got Rashford, Martial, uh, Lukaku, I can go on, you, I mean, your squad's probably better than Manchester City squad, Okay, maybe some of it in terms of squad depth. But come on, you spent half a billion pounds and you're getting you can't even and you, you you just beat an Arsenal under 21s team with Fellaini in it. I mean with what Mario Fellaini's got. I mean it just sums my head up this season. Boring, bland, pathetic football. And for me, going back to saying like Arsenal were excellent. I thought two players stand out for Arsenal. Martin Niles, who I thought was excellent, and he looks like a real player. For Arsenal and that midfield, his first time he's ever played in midfield, his first ever start in a massive game in midfield, and all the games to do it at Old Trafford. In and the centre back, I'm not even going to pronounce his name, the Greek centre back, he was sensational. He looked like a real talent, he looks like a real like leader. Some Arsenal lack in that defence. He's way better than Mustafi, and okay, I don't want to one game, but if you have to say right now, Arsenal fans out there, would you play Mustafi or would you play the Greek player who played against Manchester United? If I was me, I would go with the kid who played against Manchester United. He was ex ex exceptional. And for me, Mustafi may not even be in the team, but I would play him. Why not? He's on form. He gave some balance to that team. I thought Ospina had a really good game as well. And uh, my United, the ones back to I me, mean, Arsenal were excellent and fairly deserve, fairly deserve a draw from the game. They were bang unlucky to lose. As for my United, Mourinho has to take a lot of criticism from me because that team of Manchester United should wipe the floor with Arsenal. It's not even Arsenal's main team. There's no Aaron Ramsey, there's no Urzel, there's no Jack Wilshere, there's no Lacazette. Uh, there's not even hardly the back four to play against. No Kalesh. I mean, it's just a weak in the Arsenal team. I mean, the only players that played in it was Aubameyang and probably you had Victor Beller and the rest. They're all back. Oh. Nowhere near the first team, but good credit to Arsenal, fully least deserved a draw. But Fellaini came off at the end of the game, scored the winner. And my and Mourinho does his little pose like, oh, it's on me, it's on me. I made that substitution, it's on me. So Manchester United, Mourinho, man, come on, you need you need to play more attacking football. Come on, like, you got players to do it, just go and show it. And yeah, that's a massive win for Manchester United, which secures them Champions League football for next season, which doesn't really surprise me because we all know they're going to finish second this year because Liverpool do you know no against Stoke City so they should secure second for that with that win as for Arsenal they're all right they're all A's for in that Europa League basket massive game coming up against Madrid and that's huge because if they win the Europa League they get Champions League for next season if they don't their season's finished what a massive win for Southampton a huge monumental win for them they beat Bournemouth 2-1 in a sort of South, South Coast derby. You could say, you know, Southampton's main rivals are Portsmouth and Bournemouth's main rivals are anyone but Southampton. But a massive win for Southampton, which gives them so much confidence going into their last three games of the season. And you have to say, if they can get back-to-back -back wins, 
I've always said the hardest thing to do in a relegation scrap is getting back to back wins. If Salah win the next game, which I think they play Everton next week, then I will probably say they could stay up. Not the minute. They got a good win against Bournemouth, who for me, again, defensively are rubbish at defending at Bournemouth. I mean, they have the same, they still have the same three defenders that got them out of League One or the Championship, which is four years ago. I'm sorry, Bournemouth. You guys are, I think, 11, 12, 13 from League. That's where you are with your defence. As, as in terms of the full King, uh, Fra uh, Fraser, and many other good players on the team, you're at least a top 10 team with a bottom 10 defence. That's where Bournemouth are. Good win for Sam. I'm really happy for Tadej. She scored two very good goals, especially the second goal. My girl won a good toe poke goal. Uh, can't get a goal back, but it's only a consolation goal. What a massive save at the end from McCarthy to keep Foster, which actually took a match of deflection off Yoshida. So, massive win for Southampton, which puts everybody else at the bottom in the sort of fight for relegation. Big worry. And starting it off, Swansea, after they got beat by Chelsea in a 1 0 win, thanks to Fabio Lister's goal. That's right, Fabio Gas scored an absolutely beautiful, perler finish goal, even though Hazard I thought was excellent. Kante was man of the match. He looks like back to the Kante ball, where just all you do is pass the ball. There you go, though, Kante. He was excellent. So, Swansea, that defeat against Man City last week may have, again, I mean, not as a bit fresh in defeat, may have actually dropped their confidence down a bit. But as you expect with the final three games, I think they had the best running in the final three. They played Bournemouth for not playing for anything. And then they have Stoke and Southampton to play. So they have three very winnable games. If they win those games, they stay up, obviously. So right now, I, you probably see that Swansea. If they win them games, they have enough in the hand to stay up. But that confidence defeat, the back-to-back -back defeats against Manchester City and Chelsea, may damage them. Also, West Ham got thumped 4-1 by Manchester City. West Ham, literally, you guys are just so pathetic. I mean, you're playing Man City. Man City not playing for anything. So there's one team that deserves to be putting their foot off the gas. It is Man City. They're not playing for anything. Yes, you could say that they're playing for records. But West Ham are playing to stay in the Premier League. And what do you do? You walk on the pitch, you let Man City score three of the sloppiest goals I've seen this season. Two of them are from bad errors. Everett, who he won't make any Monday motiv motivation videos anytime soon. And, and then Declan Nice, right for the side, where he looks like a real player. I just think Zabaleta, he's, a, he's the experienced defender, has to help him out. At least tell him, no, I got it. No, Declan Rice tries to go and hits Zabaleta and he just puts an own goal. And then, the f I think it was the, f the start, the fourth goal from, from uh, Fernandinho. They're all walking. Every all player, even Hernandez, who came on the pitch, done fuck goal in 19 minutes. And to put in perspective, Yaya Turi had more touches of the ball than any West Ham player in the whole game. That is absolutely pathetic beyond belief. And West Ham right now, I will fear for you guys because you've got three tough matches coming and then form Everton, a Leicester City team, we'll get on to them in a minute, and a, a, a Manchester United team. I mean, you look real precarious, big time. And you need fight win somewhere or you are definitely going down. As for Manchester City, breaking more records, Ryan Sterling looks an absolute superstar in the making. I mean, what, what, what? Pep Boy was done to him is freaking scary. Uh, if only Raheem Sterling has a better finish on him, he could be going to Real Madrid or Barcelona or anywhere because he's absolutely superb. But massive win for Man City and they're breaking every record. Just need one more win for the next two match, for the next three games to beat the points record of Chelsea in 2004 5 seasons. And speaking of Leicester, they got absolutely molested by Crystal Palace. Wolford Zaha does what Wolford Zaha does. He scores two very good goals. Also, I want to give a shout out to Ruben Osses Cheek. Back from his major injury, he was also exceptional in this game. He scored a really good finish. And they, and that's Crystal Palace's biggest ever win in the Premier League. What a massive job Roy Hodgson has done there. They're now up to 11 in the Premier League. They are safe for our season. And Roy Hodgson, I have slammed you for the European Championships when England were got beat by Iceland. I will, back, I will take my hat off to you, man. What a job you've done there. It's an exceptional job. If only you can actually bit been technically scoring again. He did score in this game from a penalty, even though Palace just gave him the penalty. But a massive win for, for Crystal Palace and a massive, massive defeat for Leicester, who now you look like Club Pro is not going to be their manager next year. There's very rumblings of disconnect, discontent in the dressing room between Club Pro and the players. Riyad Mahrez doesn't want to be there. And I've always said 
what the fuck point? What's the point? Keeping a player who doesn't want to be there. Do you know what? I mean? Look at Liverpool. They didn't want. They, uh, Coutinho wanted to leave. He went to Barcelona. Van Dijk wanted to leave Southampton. He went to Liverpool. Just sell him. There's no point keeping a player who's not going to play for you. Just sell him. Just let him go. And for me, right now, Leicester keeping more is maybe a bad, mad, bad, bad error because it's happening them players not happening. All Greg also was sent out very card in this game. He was appalling as well. So Leicester need maybe a bit of a change. Big time. And the last game is Everton. Got a 2-0 win against Hollis Fifth say this game all in Tozard, which has really become a really good sign for them. Seven goals in, I think it's five or seven goals in many away games, so he's become a really good sign for them. But Big Sam is not the manager for you. You play boring ass football against Newcastle United, where you just won by a field walk or goal. Apart from that, it was a shake match. The set the games against last against Huddersfield, you only won because Huddersfield do not know how to score a goal and do not buy a goal and can't buy a win at the minute. So right now, Everton, Big Sam, I know you're eighth in the league, but Big Sam's not your manager. I think you probably need Marco Silva looks like to be flirting the job again. Get someone better. Big Sam is not your man. But as for Huddersfield, you have got terrible running. I mean, horrific running. You still have to play Man City next week, who will be playing champions next week. We'll be lifting the trophy next week again. You've got Manchester United and Arsenal. You couldn't ask for a worse running for them. So they pretty much need to rely on all the results to make sure they are in the Premier League next season. Okay, guys, here's the Premier League. Hey, we're going to say only one win away from breaking the points total in the history of the Premier League. There are 93 points, Manchester United with their winner on 77. Liverpool with their drug and Stoke are on 72. Then it's top and picks tonight on 68. Two points behind Chelsea, who won. Arsenal, who lost from 57, are only three points out of Burnley. Then it's Everton move up to 8th, Leicester 9th. And Newcastle United, who lost this weekend to West Brom, but they have had a very good season. A top 10 finish is still on for them. At the bottom, it's Crystal Palace who moved way up from at least 14th to 11th. Then it's Bournemouth, Watford, Brighton, who look like they're safe. And then it's between West Ham, Huddersfield, Swansea, Southampton, Stoke for relegation. And West Brom live to fight another day, but uh, it's only a matter of time. Okay, guys, I see you on this weekend in the Bundesliga. And in the Bundesliga, it's all about the relegation battle. Like it was in the Premier League, it is the Bundesliga. Like I just said, I did a little promo. It's all about relegation this week. Or Fra Cologne have been officially relegated from the Bundesliga after they lost 3 2 to Freiburg. And let's just say Cologne this season have been a mess at defending. Because two of the goals are basic errors from defenders. Not, no, not marking your man, and what but one of the most pretend offsides I've ever seen. Uh, Nick Peterson scored two very good goals, a very good win for Freiburg, which gives them a little bit of confidence because it's between them and Wolfsburg, probably Mainz for that relegation playoff, so a massive win for them. Speaking of Wolfsburg, they got fucking beaten bad big time by Hamburg, or somehow. How do they do this every year? How do they have a chance of surviving every season? This fucking club is literally... It, they must take the books and tricks and find a way of saying up. Oh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But they went 3-1 against a Wolfsburg team who look very vulnerable big time. Who now in the relegation playoff. And I don't know what happened to Wolfsburg because I think, was it four months ago? They were in the top 10. Now they're in the, they're in the relegation playoff. And they could they only two, they only two points behind them. Ahead of Hamburg, and Hamburg have now won two wins in a row. First time done that this season. So I, I don't know how Hamburg do this. I don't know how Hamburg somehow find a way of staying up every fucking season. It's fucking insane. And I don't know anymore. But at Rosberg, man, you guys need to find a win or somewhere, or you guys are going down this year. Because Mainz are also going to win this weekend, and a massive win against, against RB Leipzig, who have been absolutely dreadful this season. Theo Werner. I mean, I, I literally, the only way I can say is he wants out of there. Keita will not be there next season, and Fosberg will be there soon. So it's going to be a massive change at RB Leipzig in the summer. There's going to be so many new players come in. Players are, but we even need a new manager. So right now, they're not going to finish Champions League because they can't get the Champions League players. So Europa League is probably all they can find, all they can muster. As for Mainz, massive win, just like, just like it is for uh, Freiburg. It gives them belief going to the games from the end of the season. Of Wolfsburg is the ones that I'd be very, very over. That's the relegation sort of popped up. Now we're going to talk about the Champions League places where Schalke drew 1 1, Dortmund drew 1 1. So nothing really changed for those two teams other than they're just a point more from securing Champions League football. But Frankfurt, who are also challenging for those Champions League places and Europa League spots, cannot get Champions League after they got 4 1 by Bayern Munich. 
That's right, these two teams are going to be fighting the, in the German Cup final later on in the coming weeks. So that's a huge defeat for Frankfurt, which means they cannot get Champions League football. But they can get Europa League football. Only, I think only a point ahead of Leipzig, which Leipzig right now, their form is appalling. They could easily overtake Leipzig. But Bayern Munich do what Bayern Munich do, even though they got beaten in the Champions League semi final by Real Madrid. But I don't think they have enough to beat Real Madrid because Real Madrid have been starting to pick form up at the right, just at the right time. As for Bayern Munich, that team has got major signings to do in the summer because that's an Asian team. Robin Ruberi are out of contract in the summer, and Hamas Rodriguez looks like it's going to be a permanent signing. So, they're very flattering with Gareth Bale. I think Gareth Bale would take a big box for Bayern Munich, but will he take a pay cut to go to Bayern, to go to Bayern Munich? Remains to be seen. But anyway, good for Bayern Munich. With a 4 1. And a shout out to the youngsters who the first ever Bayern, first ever Bayern Munich goal. Really good goal as well. Good goal for So, guys, here's the Bundesliga league table with Bayern Munich at the top of 81 points. Then Schalke, who are second. Then Dortmund. And half and nine with another win. And now we ahead of Leipzig, ahead of Leverkusen in 2 4. Then it's RB Leipzig, who are only a point ahead of Frankfurt. Stuttgart, who are only a handful of points with their big win as well this weekend. Then it's Club Bayern and, and Hertha Berlin. At the bottom is Augsburg or Bremen, Hanover, who you probably say are just starting to get twitchy in the bottom of that table. Then it's Mainz, Freiburg, who have, and Wolfsburg, who are pretty. And, uh, it's pre Mainz, Freiburg, Wolfsburg, and Matt Hamburg who are fighting for the relegation spots. Cologne are down to the second division of German football. So, guys, here's happening this weekend in La Liga. And the Liga Barcelona have been crowned champions and Deportivo La Coruña have officially been relegated. That's right, Melo Barcelona have won their league, they won the double this season, and what a season it's been. Barcelona won this game for two. Lionel Messi scored yet another hat trick, his 41st hat trick for Barcelona. What a man, what a career he has had, big time. He's just, he's just the goat of goats. If you can say goat of a goat. But anyway, he's, just the, he's the greatest player I've ever seen. He's just, very him. Barcelona are just not the same. What a really good goal he scored. But give it to Depot Table like Grand. I thought they played a really good game. Barcelona took the lead thanks to Coutinho, who's fine look like to be the player that Barcelona signed. Dembele also had a good game. Messi scored the second goal. Depot Table had, had a goal chopped off for offside, but had a goal scored anyway. And then Depot Table got a goal back at the start of the second half, which to be honest, they don't deserve. But then that was the line of Messi show. He scored two absolute perler goals, especially the fourth goal was fucking scary. The little one, two, the Suarez, and then he just taps in there. It's just beautiful football. He is just another level to any of them players. What a season Barcelona have had. They can still go whole season on beating the play Real Madrid in the Classico next Saturday. So that's a massive game. If they win that game, for me, they will go a whole season unbeaten because the next two matches are against two teams in the bottom three. So I expect them to go on and win, to sort of be like the invincibles of the league. But it's all in that very good game if they can do it. As they to that green, they have officially been relegated and they are joined Las Palmas and Malaga in the Scudia division, which has been a horrific season for those guys. But the thing that broke the problem with Devon Table this season, they can score goals. But my god, they can concede a lot of them. And that's the reason why they're in the second division in Spanish football. Let it go Madrid get a 1-0 win against away at Alves thanks to uh, Kevin Guerrero's penalty. Wasn't a great game, but they just they just sprint over, they just pretty much got over the line at Atletico Madrid, which pretty much you expect to secure them second this season. They haven't had a great La Liga season this year at Atletico Madrid. The start of the season, they had a pair of start of the season. If they had a better Start. They could have challenged Barcelona for the title this year, but right now, if they beat Arsenal in Europa League, then they win the Europa League. I think it's been a really good season. They won the Europa League, they finished second ahead of Real Madrid. I think mean, that's an alright season. I know like they're going to sell Griezmann to bring in our player, so I think it's been an alright season, but this game was terrible. Real Madrid beat La La Leganes, the team that knocked them out of the Copa del Rey a handful of months ago. So. Yeah, and Gareth Bale was the star man on this team. He was excellent. He scored the goal, uh, one of the goals in this game. Uh, he looked like a real player, sort of wanted to stick one to Zidane, saying, "You know what? I want to start in this team. Let me start. I want to stay." But I don't think he will stay. I think he's circus to requirements in the summer. I think Real Madrid wants to sell him. Gareth Bale wants to stay, but Real Madrid wants to sell him. So if only one option you out there, Gareth, you have to go. You can go to Bayern. I don't see you going to Man United because. 
I don't know he's fit in that mind any team. But I think Baron Poe is the right fit for him. So yeah, but he played well in this game, a good win for Real Madrid to secure Champions League football for next season and probably to secure third and to get one over the team that knocked in the Copa de Rey. Valencia uh, will also be in the Champions League this season. After that, nil nil draw against Elbar. Not for me to talk about this game, although it was two teams' seasons over. Valencia, top four. Congratulations to them. Elbar, ten, top ten looks like to be where you'll be finishing the season. Sevilla, who have sacked their manager, Montella, who has single-handedly not been good. He's been sacked by AC Milan, and now been sacked by Sevilla. He's had the worst season of manager you've never seen. So he, he was sacked because they got thumped 5-0 by Barcelona, who Barcelona have been excellent this season. They beat Manchester United and got to the semi, the quarter, the last 16. So they got to the quarter finals against Bayern Munich. I think he's been hard done by, but I don't understand why he was sacked. Because it's been a terrible season on the Liga. They're 7th right now. Nowhere near the European spots. So yeah, it's been a terrific season from Sevilla. And they need major signings in the summer. Because for me, attacking wise, apart from Ben Yedda, it's a bang average Sevilla team, who for me are a bang average team right now. And looks like maybe they need a new voice in terms of upstairs for Sevilla. But uh, they have been had a great season. Montella is out of job. A good win for Levante, who are definitely safe. For La Liga, congratulations to them. Fully deserve it. They've had a really good run, 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 a really good run that minute. And they could easily finish a decent sort of bottom half. This season. And last game is was a very entertaining game between Villarreal and Celta Vigo. 3-1 and played out. Baca scored a hat trick. I, I said last week, Carlos Baca is inconsistent. Not score one week, scored a hat trick this week. I bet he doesn't score one next week. That's where he is, inconsistent. But uh, a really good hat trick from even though Celta Vigo were horrific defensively. Actually, both teams were horrific defensively. But good shout out to them. Good four one. A good four one win for Villarreal. Okay, guys, here's the here's a lot of it. Hey, we were Barcelona top on sixty eight point on eighty six points. Then it's Atletico Madrid on seventy five. Real Madrid seventy one and Valencia on sixty seven. Then it's Real Betis, Villarreal, Getafe, Sevilla, Granada, Real Sociedad are up to tenth for their win and Dev and Celta are down to eleventh. And then the bottom, it is Elbor, Alves, Letico Bau, Espanyol, Leganes, Levante are all safe, Deportivo, Las Palmas, and Malaga have officially been relegated. So, guys, I'll see you on this weekend in Syria. And in the Syria, Tyrese twists Scudetto changes again. But let's start off with Juventus, who somehow or someone come back from 2 1 down and in the last four minutes scored two goals. To win the game, I felt so sorry for Inter Milan. They were excellent for the whole game, and even though they're in the ten men of the match, you actually thought Juventus was in the ten men of the whole game because they were fucking shit. But that was Costas with the first goal. Mario Cali scored an absolutely perfect header. His only touch in the whole box, his first shot in the whole game, and he scored. That's how consistent Mario Cali has been this year. And I'm referring to him, that Inter Milan team. I know even near the Champions League places, or even fighting for the Champions League places. So what a season he's had! Twenty-seven league goals this season. Between him and Chiro, the hero of Mobile, who's been player of the year in Syria. I leave like to you guys. What a season those two have had. Then they got a goal, then they took the lead in this game with uh, Exam Parish's really good ball, even though Bazali puts it in his own net. The red card was a red card, yes, it was VAR sort of checked it and then it was a red card, even though it took fucking ages, it just it was a red card. Then they bought on the ball at Juventus. But for me, the game changed when Inter Milan took off Rafinha, who I thought was man of match in this match. They took him off, and then, and then sort of Juventus had a sort of drive for, like, oh, all right, we can do this now. And Mario Cardi came off, so the Inter Milan took off the two main players, who I thought two players, be two best players for Inter Milan in the whole game, off, and then he went on to win the game. Frank's two two very good goals. One of them was from Hingoing header. I don't understand who was marking him. But anyway, and Congrado scored one of the flukiest goals you've ever seen, which just dunks off the ground in the net. So Juventus do what Juventus do. They find a way of grafting every time. I don't know why they do that. I felt so sorry for Milan. They didn't deserve to lose the game. These deserve a draw at least. But Juventus, they just have that mentality. Not give up. It's absolutely amazing. Which meant Napoli had to win against Fiorentina to make sure the gap was one point. One point, no, they got thumped 3-0 thanks to C C uh, Simeone's son scoring a hat-trick. So uh, it wasn't a great day for Napoli. They obviously watched the game, 
against Net Juventus, and they saw the Hainwaying header. It must have heart must have sunk. Oh no! And then they went to Fjords, which they have a horrific record, and they got fun free now. Fjordina, man, good win for you guys. You guys are definitely fighting for your big spots. I, I face him in Ant's form at the moment. You could easily catch them, but that, that's a massive dent to Napoli's title hopes. Right now, you have to say Juventus are the favourites. It's a four point gap with three games to go. Juventus are going to win yet in Austria. Juventus are going to win yet in Austria to Napoli. I feel so sorry for you guys. I thought you beat that Juventus last week. I thought this was a chance. No, it's not. Now we're on to the Champions League places in Syria where Roma get a massive win against Kiev for one. Yes, they got from 5 2 by road by. Liverpool, but they got two away goals, and Roma are very good at home this season. They haven't lost at home this season at all. So, if Liverpool are going to somehow go through, they have to beat. They have to somehow get a draw. I don't know, it could be a 4 4 draw, it doesn't matter. They're going to throw in, they have to get a draw against this Roma team. Simple as that. And that's one for Roma, which puts them third. And they're on goal difference because Lazio won the Swiss weekend as well, thanks to Milan. Savage is really good header. Chiro and Mobley came off with a hamstring injury, doesn't look good, but uh, they got this great result in Lazio, which puts daylight between them and Enter with their defeat at the weekend, which puts them four points. So you probably have to say Lazio now the favourites, along with Roma, to get Champions League this season. And in the relegation battle, Splat get a massive win against Verona, who looks like it's going to be a matter of time for they go down. Also a big win for Pertoni after they thumped Sassuolo Fowler 1. So that gives them huge belief to stay up the shares between them and and that brings Kievo, who sacked their coach, and now in the bottom three. So it really is really tight down there. I also want to give a shout out to Unanese. What the fuck's happened to you Unis for? Unis were in the top half. Unis are now only three points of staying in the league. I mean what's going on, Unanese? You couldn't even beat Benavento, you were leading the game twice. I just I just don't know. I do I don't know what's going on there. But right now it's literally anyone's guess who's going to get the last sort of... You think Verona's down, and Benavento already are down. It's between that sort of pile of everybody else, sort of... It's so tight and congested, it could be anyone. So guys, here's the Serie A table, where Juventus are four points here of Napoli, and looks like it's not going to be... It's going to be an hour, Serie A, Scudetto, I think it's seven or eight straight. I don't know how many times I won, but anyway. Roma, Lazio, with two wins, with their wins, are now on 70 points and 68. And then there's another bit of a gap back to Inter Milan. Then it's Atlanta, uh, who are sixth, AC Milan, who are seventh, Sampdoria, Fiorentina, who are catching Milan and Atlanta. Then it's Torino, who are in the top 10. At the bottom is Verona, Bologna, Sassuolo, who look like those teams are safe. Then it's a real scrap between Unesi, Crotone, Calderic, Spla, and Chievo. For the red, for those sort of who gets the last relegation spot, Dennis House Verona, who will be relegated next weekend if they do not win, and Benevento, a good point for them, but they are down. So, guys, his last league, league earned. And in league earned, it's all about the Champions League places. Again, in this, where Monaco drew, Leon win, and Marseille drew. So, what this stuff, Monaco, they drew against relegation fighting Amens. What the hell is going on with Monaco's form? They, they got beat last week. They now can't beat the, the team's fight for relegation this week, and they got some big last couple of matches as well. So right now, Monaco were second, are now third, and it looks like Marseille is catching up their heels. So they could easily sell out the top three this year, which is mental. But right now, it's uh, they could, they easily could, because Lyon now we go above them with their massive win this weekend, a two comfortable two 0 win against Nats. And De Memphis Depay has been a revelation in the last few months. His goals, assists, his creativity, he's just become a different player. Simply, it's not the same player he played for Manchester United, he's been better. And you could say the league is not a great league, but he looks more confident. And he's been a, a so big for them this week. Not even for Kerr, who is starting to get back into sort of fitness, but he's been the best player for them this season for Kerr. But Memphis Depay in the last month has been a month. What a win for Leon, who's then months up to second, and you probably say right now. They will be the favourites to get second. Marseille drew 1-1 against Florian uh, Turban, who's been phenomenal for them this season. Scored in the, in the, in the goal against Salzburg midweek to give him a comfortable cushion of a 2-0 lead at Leipzig, at uh, Salzburg, even though Lazio had a comfortable 2-goal lead and fucked it up. So that's literally anything can go there. But a good, uh, 
a good point you could say, but it's not really a good point because they're leading the game and they're on the verge of winning the game. Actually, would have been they're lead from Monaco, who would have been the fourth this weekend. So they're getting closer, but it's really tight between who will get those last those two Champions League spots between those three teams. It's literally anyone's guess. Leo played Mets in the sort of two teams rock bottom, trying to find a massive six pointer, huge six pointer. Whoever won this game would stay up. And for me, Leo have a huge chance of staying up. Mets, for me, are down. They will, for me, will be confirmed relegation next week if they do not win whoever they play next week. But Leo, massive win for them, which gives them a little bit of, little, little bit of hope, hope of staying up. And as for the last game, PSG played Gandalf and sort of two teams with nothing to play for. And it sort of was like that. Gandalf were leading the game twice in this match and couldn't get over the hurdle, couldn't get over the final end. Because PSG scored two late goals, Edison Cavani is an all-time leading goal scorer for PSG. Well done to him, he's really become a really big presence for Paris Saint-Germain in that attack. Also, Kylian Mbappe had a really good game as well, but uh, a 2-2 draw was probably a fair result. Alright guys, here is this league earned table where PSG are making one top of name one point. Then it's Leon who move above Monaco into the automatic Champions League spot with 72. Then it is Monaco, who are for on 71. Then only a point behind Marseille, who are still like, catching up big time. Then the massive back back to Snetzi, and really winning me up to 5th. Venice me up to 6th for their win. Nice lost this weekend, and are on start to 7th on goal difference. Then it's Montpellier, Bordeaux, Nats. Then at the bottom is Gandalf, Dijon, Armand, Angers, Cannes, Strasbourg, Toulouse. They're lost this weekend, which really congested back down there. Trois are in the relegation playoff. Leo, Leo only go there behind Trois and Mets for me are down and for me you've been fighting for relegation all season. You had a horrific start to the season and you're getting sort of where you should be. Not a good season for you guys. Alright guys then the football impact this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys are loving your lovely amazing sunny day. Enjoy it. Please like, subscribe, the natural.